I mean, it was partly a mistake. I think if I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't do it. But anyway, what is up everyone? Ollie here. So I play PS5 a lot. I play it pretty much every single day. I do love it. I love my PS5. I have it literally sitting here out of frame. You can't see it because I don't want to show you just yet. I play it with my friends and stuff. It's why I got the PlayStation instead of the Xbox because a lot of my friends are on PlayStation. So it just made sense to get the PS5. It's just as much of a social thing as it is a gaming thing for me. I love being able to keep in touch with friends, play with friends online. That's why I stuck with PlayStation for all these years. So I do actually prefer the look of the Xbox Series X. I love the minimalist square boxy design of it, the all black finish. And I wish PlayStation went for the same finish. Now, the PlayStation design is definitely interesting. I'm not the biggest fan of it. And I can see why maybe they did it because it's very noticeable, very in your face, very garish is the best way to say it. And yeah, the PlayStation comes with white plates as standard, white side plates. I do anticipate that Sony will come out with custom plates for the PS5 at some point. They used to do custom editions of gaming consoles previously where you could have consoles that look completely different compared to the standard model. I'm just not a fan of the white plates and I have seen some companies come up with their own custom plates. Dbrand, for example, Dbrand came out with their own black plates and I was going to purchase those black plates, but I went online and I saw that it's obviously being shipped from the US and there's like two or three month waiting time, waiting list. I wasn't prepared to wait for that long. So I just thought in the meantime, let's try spray painting my own plates to black and see, see what happens, see how it goes. I had some leftover spray paint in matte black. I'll leave a link to it. I just got it from Amazon. It is nothing special. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd give it a try, do a couple of coats, see what it looks like. I actually ended up running out of spray paint in between. So I had to buy another can and get it delivered the next day. And yeah, I just did a couple of coats. This is my first try at spray painting something myself. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what's good practice, what's not. So I know there are going to be people in the comments which are much more experienced than I am at spray painting. So yeah, you know, this is my first time and I just thought I'd give it a go. And I mean, it turned out okay, I guess. So I have it here. Ooh, one big boy. So yeah, I mean, it looks okay, um, but it's not perfect, not perfect by any means. If I were to do it again, there would be a lot of things that I would do differently and there would be a lot of things I'd change. So for example, I didn't have a very clean environment. I just did it outside and it was windy and the weather wasn't great. So there are little bits of like outdoor dust on the paint itself. So it's not a very smooth finish at all. And because I didn't really have a good setup for the spray painting, there are bits where the paint has sort of overflowed and there's also a bit where it's smudged so it's smudged quite severely and it looks looks a bit shit i'll be honest with you it just, it just looks a bit rubbish but it's it's just stuff that i'm just like eh. like you know these plates are at the end of the day replaceable so i can just replace them in the future i'm not too bothered if they're not absolutely perfect the other problem with it is is that it scratches really easily the paint comes off very easily and i think that's just because i didn't sort of prime it or sand it down which probably would have helped with the paint sticking to the actual plastic itself but hey, you know, I mean, apart from the smudges, apart from the bits of overflowing paint, it looks pretty good. I mean, I think it still looks better than the white plates compared to how it looked before. I feel like this just looks so much, so much stealthier, so much, so much meaner. It looks more like a, like a knight. Like, I'm not really sure what's the best way to explain it. The thing is, I've noticed, um, it's hard to see, I guess, on camera, but the middle bit, the actual console itself is more of a dark blue and the plates are obviously black. So you can see the difference in color. It's a bit of a weird color choice that Sony have gone with. I'm surprised they didn't just go with gloss black, but you know, you're not really gonna see it that much. You're not going to inspect it, are you? You're not going to go up to your PlayStation and look at it every single day and see all the colors don't match. It's most likely going to be sitting in a media unit or hidden away in a media unit. I feel like I need to put it down because it's just so heavy. It's such a big bloody thing. There we go, that's better. If I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't. I think I would have just left it white and just bought some custom plates online because they're going to be much better finished than what I've done. I think it's also down to the perfectionist in me. I want it to look absolutely perfect. And knowing that there's a bit of overflowing paint and knowing that there's some sort of like smudges and there's bits where it's like scraped and it's not a very smooth finished, kind of just think like, ugh, just looks a bit, mm. you know, I just wish it was a bit more perfect. But 
the great thing about it is, like I said, it's going to be sitting on a, on a media unit. It's going to be sitting away from me. So I'm not going to be handling it. I'm not going to be looking at it up close. Um, so I guess at the same time, it's not too much of a big deal. I can just leave it on my media unit next to the TV or next to my gaming setup, wherever else it may be. And it will fit fine. It will look fine. I will most likely buy some proper custom plates at some point. I just think it makes a lot more sense than having the crappy plates that I have now. And yeah, like I said, the finish will be much better. They will look much better. Just will look a lot more professional. So yeah, if you guys are thinking of spray painting your own, do it if you're experienced, if you know how to spray paint things properly. But if you're very much a beginner like me, who doesn't really know anything about spray painting, I probably wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more. So before I finish this video, I actually wanted to share my gaming setup, my current gaming setup, because I recently got a monitor arm to have both the monitors floating basically on the monitor arm. Freeze up desk space so that I don't have the monitor stands taking up desk space because this is quite a small and shallow desk. As you can see, these are two 27 inch monitors and it's basically overflowing over the desk already. Uh, I think this desk is only 120 centimeters wide. It's just a plain IKEA tabletop on top of Alex drawers and a trestle over here. When it comes to what I have set up here, on the left monitor, I have my PS5 set up, and on the right monitor, I have my gaming PC set up. And this actually works really well because I've started streaming a little bit on my Olio Plays channel. Because I play so much, I thought, hey, why don't I just stream whilst I'm playing? So I stream directly from the PS5. I don't actually stream from my PS5 to the computer and then up to YouTube. I just stream directly from the PS5. And I use the PlayStation HD camera, PS5 HD camera. And then I also have a mic here, uh, a USB mic, which I just plug in directly to the PS5. And it works really well. <laughs> it actually works really, really well. I can stream in 1080p, 60 frames per second. And yeah, the mic quality is good. The video quality is good. And yeah, it just works really well. I have the gaming PC on the right, as I mentioned. I have the Keychron K1, and then I have the Logitech MX Master 3, MX3, MX Master 3, something like that. And yeah, that's what I use to control my PC. And I can monitor my stream, obviously, on the PC screen whilst I'm playing my PS5. The setup itself is actually very much a work in progress. It is a pretty much a big mess right now. I use the PlayStation Pulse headset with my PS5 for audio. Love that headset. I think for the price that it is, it's actually really great value. And then I have Xbox controller, which I use on the PC, PS5 controller, which I use on the PS5, of course. And then over here, um, I'll be honest, this bit really needs a lot of work. It is such a mess. I have my PS5 there on that shelf, just about fits really well. I have my router and sort of modem and everything all over there. And then I have my PC down there. The PC is currently in bits because I think I have a PSU problem. Uh, power supply problem. I need a new SFX power supply, but it's really hard getting F SFX power supplies right now. Um, they're sort of out of stock everywhere. You can see how terrible the cable management is. I mean, there really isn't much I can do with the cables here. There's just so many devices all connected up that I don't really have much choice. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, the PC is in bits. You can see my cooler is over there, my liquid cooler power supply. But I really do like this PC case. This is the Striacom DA2. It's just a wicked PC case, made from aluminium, looks great, super high quality. Now you may be wondering, why do I have my PS5 here connected to two 4K 60Hz monitors when I have a 4K OLED 120Hz TV in my living room? And the main reason for that is I actually prefer playing first person shooters on a smaller display, 27 inch display, rather than a big TV. I still like to play on my OLED TV, my big 65 inch OLED TV, but the games that I like to play on that are more sort of story games like The Last of Us, like Uncharted. But when it comes to first person shooters, I much, much prefer a smaller display like one of these. One of the things I really don't like about this setup is that the two monitors are mismatching. I'm still waiting for a good 4K 120 Hz monitors with HDMI 2.1. Once we have those sort of monitors available, I'll probably buy two of them and replace these two monitors, have them side by side and it will look much cleaner. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed a quick peek at my current gaming setup.